Hello, my friends. It's Tony Gonzalez from Made in Metal. And today we are here talking to Hannes Van Dahl, drummer in Sabaton. Hello, Hannes. How are you? I'm great. I'm, I'm happy to be here. When I saw that you were available for interviews, I didn't miss the opportunity because here in Made in Metal, we love drummers. Great. So, and we are here because next March, Sabaton will release a new CD. Please tell me the title and the main subject of the CD in general terms. Yeah, so this album is called The War to End All Wars. And this is the, uh, the second album that we have um, that is about World War I. We released an album before this called The Great War. And we simply felt that it's a too big of an historical event to leave that to one album. And there were too many stories that we wanted to write about that we didn't couldn't fit on the first one. So this is, I wouldn't say number two, but it's it's a continuation of of the first world war. And this is uh, your CD number 10 as Sabaton. And uh, you have been in the band for almost 10 years now. Yes, sir. Tell, yes, tell me, you have recorded four CDs, no? Or yep. five? No, I think it's four. Four, four. How do you feel in the last 10 years? Oh, I mean, the last 10 years has been the best, best 10 years of my life. It's also been very fast, you know, like everything has been fast except the last year and a half. I can say, tell you that. Yes, but that, that goes for everyone. But but um, musically, I think it's been great also to be touring that much that we've been doing. I mean, we've done a lot of shows. And I think that you can hear that in an album as well. So coming up now on, on this album, I think everybody in this band really outdid themselves on, on, on this album musically. And, and you know, in this band, we push each other a lot. There's this very nice, friendly, competitive thing going on. So I'm super proud of them. And uh, I think it turned out so great. Going back to the album, I remember, I don't know if you know, that In Bay Malstein published a CD with the same title, uh, The War to End All Wars. Don't you think that there is a problem with the titles? Ooh, I, did, I didn't actually even know that. Yes. Uh, so if you receive a calling from Inbe, you know that he's uh, asking money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Um, if if Inbe calls me, I, I'm going to ask him a lot of questions also. <laughs> so he better, uh, you know, be prepared that it's going to take a while. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. That's crazy. I'm not a huge. Uh, I'm not into that a lot, actually. The early stuff, yes, of course, but um, no, I didn't know. Hannes, but uh, speaking of uh, your drum work in the CD, to me it was interesting. Let's go and speak a little about the songs. Yeah. Because, uh, for example, I'm going to tell you something that I don't like a little for the songs. Yeah. But first, I'm going to start with the positive. And I think that the uh, the positive is the approach you did in uh, Unkillable Soldiers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please tell me how do you do when a song like this comes to you? For example, the writer give you the the rhythm, or you prepare the rhythm and the rest. Well, uh, first off, uh, there will be a demo, but the demo is very basic. So it's so, so like. It's more like ideas of how to think, mm -hmm. and then it's up to me to do what I want with it. But I think that also comes from a certain amount of trust. Now we've been working together for, for 10 years, or give or take. He knows what I can do, and he also understands that, I understand that as a drummer, I'm here to do the best I can for the song. Mm. That's my main goal. I'm going to try to make this song better or as good as it can. Sometimes it's to back off 
and sometimes it's to push forward. So this song, for me, it's really like the ha hand in the glove, you know, always with musicians, you're usually more comfortable playing something and less comfortable playing something else. So for me, I mean, it's a total wasp uh, drumming, you know, early wasp. So there will be toms all over the place. And it's great fun to record. It's great fun to play. There's a lot of drums on this song. So, so I had a lot of fun recording it for sure. Yes, there is a lot of drums. I pay attention to the drum parts mm -hmm. a lot. But now I discovered that one of the points that uh, the band lies to me is the drum parts. Because even when you can say that the band is power metal, mm -hmm. you are not you are not concentrated always in the double bass. No, you play no. a lot with your hands. Yeah. Yes. Let's tell me about it. Okay, that's very perceptive of you, actually. I I think I think as a drummer, I think like I said earlier, I think my job is in this to to make the song as good as I can. I, I'm pretty uninterested myself in music where you play double bass for six minutes. You know, that's all you do. Okay, I don't know why I should listen to that. You know, I, I like the variety of music and I like the variety of, of drumming. You know, I love Slayer. I love Slayer, but I also love Fleetwood Mac. You know, I, I love it. Um, and therefore, I think that maybe then reflects in the music you make or, or record, you know, if let's say Soldier of Heaven, where I play zero drum fills, it's only in the pocket. Um, it's all about the groove for me. And for me, it's really the time to back off. And I can enjoy that as much as playing a crazy song because it's equally tricky. I mean, you, you, need, you have to groove as a drummer to me, otherwise, Nobody's going to dance. Yes. Now that you mentioned Soldiers of Heaven, I have seen that there are some military marching parts, like in Soldiers of Heaven, Sarajevo, and others. Are you comfortable playing that basic drums part, or do you prefer the more energetic parts? No, I love it. I really love it. It's, it's a big challenge, you know. Anybody there? I've heard a lot of people say that playing in ACDC is easy. No, it's not easy. But it's imagine, man, it's super hard. You you need to be groovy. You need to back off. You need to keep it in the pocket, and you're only the backbone of the band. That's what you are: the stability, the power. But it's like a, um, a rock, you know. That's it. So much steady foundation. So, no, I love it. I love it equally as much, for sure. And which of these songs from this CD makes you work harder? <clears throat> I, have, I have an idea, but maybe I, I like to ask you first. Sarajevo? Yes. The midsection? Because mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that's the, the fastest maybe Sabaton have done. I might be wrong there, but it's quite a tricky part in the, in the, in the middle there. So, I don't know, the work the hardest, not, maybe not because it's a pretty short part, but it was challenging to, to, to really nail it and get it as energetic, as fast with all the details in the hands. And Killable Soldier too, a lot of energy on that one. It's a real bicep killer, that one. Hellfighters, Hellfighters, yeah, for sure, Hellfighters. Yes, I was thinking of Hellfighters. Yes, it's one of my favorites. Tell, tell me a little about the song. To me, this song, this is my favorite song on this album. Mine too. Oh, great. This can always change. So sometimes this, this one, but it's been since we recorded it. And, and it's equal to me because both me and Chris got really, you know, okay, show me what you got. So, and I think we really did. We played, we triggered each other, you know, in a healthy competition. Um, and I think you can hear that. I think you can hear the energy. I think you can hear the sweat almost, you know, mm. and, 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 and at the same time, very organic, you know, what you hear is what we played. And then I like the story. To yes. me, it's one of my favorite stories on this, uh, on this album. Uh, I'm going to pay attention to the lyrics too. The next time I listen to it. 
the yeah. song. Yes, in the in this CD, you use a woman narrating or explaining some part. On on the history edition, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, do you think it was a need to understand better the lyrics? Uh, I think you can then uh, choose which one you prefer. Mm. We did also this with the Great War, and um, some people like the history version better because they get a little bit inside of uh, the story of the song, and some people like the song. And here we go. So. It's a matter of preference, I guess. Uh, me personally, I like the history version better. I didn't know. I thought that there was only one version, and oh, I okay. received the history version. Yes. I tried. Okay. Okay. Yes. As far as I know, there will be you can you can choose. Yeah. Yes, but I prefer the history version. Yes. Yeah, so. I think it's so nice when you get a little bit, you know, not too long, but you get a little bit understanding and get in the mood of what what we're trying to. To express, I guess. And speaking about women, I didn't know the story of Woman of the Dark. Mm -hmm. Did you know it before the song? Uh, that story? No, I did not. No, I did. Me personally, I didn't know, but I heard it when we started talking about the. Well, I heard it already a while back. Yeah, for sure. But I, I it was not a story that I uh, that I knew. But it's uh -huh. a it's a great story. Yes, it's a great story. Yeah. So now that we are speaking about that, by the way, does the the pacifist movement criticize the music of Sabaton, or they understand the real meaning after the lyrics? Uh, no, not that I know anyway. And I think it's simply maybe just to read a little bit, mm -hmm. and then you will understand that it's about history, and it's not about. I mean, it's a non-political. Band. We don't take any sides. I want to tell you a story that in 1995, a death metal band called Combat Noise was founded there in Cuba, and they are inspired in the story of the war too. Hmm. Do you know other bands like Sabaton whose lyrics are in Pirates in the World? It's possible that I heard about this band before. Yes? Yeah, yeah, then I've heard about it. Indeed. Perfect, because they will be really happy if they know that you hear about this band. Yeah, yeah, I, I, th I really think so, actually, to be honest. Uh, but if you think about it, you you have Iron Maiden has a lot of songs about it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so there's, I, I don't know, I couldn't say one more other band that, that specifically maybe only sings about that. Mm -hmm. But for sure, I know a lot of bands that has, you know, here and there. Uh, I think Sabaton is, in this moment, a very successful band. According to you, why the band is so successful? I have an idea, but I would like to listen to yours. Oh, that's a good question. I think that in this band, I think some things are maybe not too overanalyzed. When it comes to music, I think if we write a song together and we like this song, I like it. Chris, Tommy, Joachim and Parrot likes it. We enjoy playing it. Okay, cool. Then we do that song. Then it's done. Is it great or not to somebody else? I don't know. You know, that's not up to us to decide. We can only write music that we like and that we enjoy playing and writing. So I think that's maybe one part. I, I don't know the the recipe to success, to be honest. But um, and I think also one thing that I find very important is the to be close to your fans and to actually listen to what they say. I think that there is one point to be close to your fan. But let me tell you, Hannes, if I knew the recipe of the success, I will be successful. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Yes, but for example, I was thinking of uh, of it, and I think that uh, one of the of the important success of Sabaton is the investment that the band do in their own band. For example, uh, you have come to Spain. I have seen the, I have seen the band in Spain several times. I remember 
that you come to Spain at the and the opening act was a sect, the yeah. German band. Oh yeah, yes. that's right. Yep. That was a very good movement in terms of uh, marketing. And uh, for example, the other was at Leyendas the Rock. Mm -hmm. Yep. So another bands go to a festival and, and they say, okay, we go only the musician and maybe uh, a fabric behind with the name of the band. Yep. But then you came to Spain with uh, the tank, uh, oh, all, yeah. all the special effort. This costs money and effort. Yep. Yes, and I think that you decided to invest money and effort to make the band bigger. Oh, yeah. And, yes. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And also to give, maybe as simple as to give the fans the best show that we can. How do we do that? Because that's our, that's our job in the end. I, and that was a great show. I remember that show. Yes, you and remember also, that. <laughs> me too, of yeah, course. Well, but uh, yeah, and then for me personally, I'm a huge food food geek. So for me coming to Spain, I'm in heaven, you know. Yes. <laughs> I always want to spend, um, and wine, of course, spend a lot of days there, you know. Yes, and, and Jamón Serrano. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, I know that th this is a part of the success. And I think that other is that the band is uh, developing different ways all related to Sabaton. Because, for example, I follow the Sabaton History Channel. Yeah. So it's really interesting. Yeah, nice. That's nice to hear. I, I think it's, I mean, some people just want to listen to the music and have a beer. Mm -hmm. And that's fine too, you know, if you, I don't, if some people don't give a shit about the stories, fine. Here's the music, good. But then for the people who loves the story and wants to dig deeper, I think the History Channel is a real treat to, to look at. And also India is doing it uh, great, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you thinking of visiting Spain in this year or next year? I mean, as soon as we can. That's the best answer I can get. I know that everybody in this band loves coming to Spain. We had some of our best shows in Spain. Um, it's it's The shows are crazy, you know. It's loud. It's sweaty. It's just like heavy metal shows should be like. So let's open up this world and let's go. Yes, so now that you tell me that it's uh, sweaty, I remember in the at Leyendas del Rock, you know, it's in August, it's very hot. Yeah. And, and Joaquin Broden with the uh, metal jacket. So yeah. Oof, he must be really, yeah. really sweaty. And also uh, flames and everything. Yes. yes. You, you miss it so much now when, when it's been such a long time. Yes. So... Hannes, this was basically our interview. Thank you very much for your time. If you want to say something to the Spanish fans and the Cuban fans too, this is your moment. Yeah. Muchas gracias. I mean, we will come back as soon as we can. And I believe me, after two years, this band is hungrier than we've ever been. So hope to see you there. And thank you so much. You're welcome, Hannes. I really like this conversation. Yeah, likewise. I hope yeah. if you come to Spain, if you come to uh, Leyendas del Rock again, because at Leyendas del Rock, we are very close friend of Marcos Rubio, the organizer, the owner. Yeah. And uh, if you come to Leyendas del Rock, I will try to contact you. Yeah. May maybe August is not good for wine, but a good beer, and maybe Jamón Serrano. Please, I would love to. Yes. Gracias. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Be safe.